Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Stardust channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna be casting a 2v2 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06, the map is Anori and the matchup is Double Rohan against Mordor and Isengard. Before further ado, let's get it started. At the bottom left side of the map we have the blue, blue Mordor player uh, Santiago, his ally at the top right side is the grey Isengard player Siglipath, their opponent at the top left side is the blue Rohan player Arbok and his ally at the bottom left side is the green Rohan player Smog Gogo, <laughs> I like this name, Smog Gogo, that sounds nice, Smog Gogo, Smog Gogo, I like to say it. I'm gonna keep saying it all the time by the way, spoiler alert. Alright, we're gonna have um, two farms start obviously from both the Rohan players. They will be using those farms to get some more and more peasants early on on the field. That's gonna be helpful because their goal early on will be to kill those Lamir Mills from both the evil factions, in this case the Isengard's player at the top right side, but also the Mordor player at the bottom right side. And yeah, the evil factions early on against good factions, their goal is on the other side to keep those Lamir Mills protected. And that's a mistake already from the model player, he was sending his golem and one orc to the bottom side of the troll layer. And you wanna only send one of these units. Ideally you wanna use the golem to send him forward in the middle of the map, this way you can catch those peasants early on. And it looks like that both the Rohan players are gonna focus the Isengard player at the top right side. Which is smart, that's the team play I am expecting to see in every battle for Middle Earth game because the coordination as a team can help you to win even unfavorable matchups like this one for example as double Rohan against Morda Isengard. And Isengard's player is building two furnaces start into the third furnace, he's also gonna go for a defensive tower which will be protecting this Lammer Mill, at least this pathway, you can still attack this Lammer Mill from this side and take it down. And because there are so many peasants, it's gonna be nearly impossible for the Isengard player to defend. Because the peasants are not gonna try to fight the Urukai, they're gonna just focus down the Lamir Mill instead. And Lamir Mill is not gonna be able to survive this much burst. The Hobbit can try to get reveal, uh, you know, cloaked right after, which is gonna make him invisible. But he has to wait until the eye is gone. Because I, if you don't know, is able to reveal the stealth units. That means even if you cloak with the Hobbit, you will still uh, get seen when the Eye of Sauron is active on you. The Hobbit here is doing a great job killing those Lamir Mill workers. We have some more peasants coming now. From the green Rohan player, Smogogo, <laughs> I like the name. On the other side, one of the Rohan players might go for the stable and the other one can potentially, you know, capture this camp in the middle of the map. He can go for the Rohirrim archers after getting either Theodin or Eomi on the field. There are some, you know, different options obviously for the double Rohan team. But they have to play that kind of perfect because the longer the game goes on, the harder it is gonna become for the Double Rohan team to win against Morda Isengard. Just because of the uh, team fight potential from, the, uh, from Morda Isengard with the utility and leadership they have for the army is just insane. Like Drama Troll, Warchant, Eye of Sauron, Witch King potentially later on and even potentially the Lord's leadership later on as well. And it looks like that this Isengard player is going for the Lords, which I think is a mistake. Because you don't need lords in this matchup, since Mordor is already offering you that much leadership. Oh, that's a sneaky attack from the green Rohan player. He might be able to take down the slaughterhouse, but there are not many peasants remaining on the field. And the oryx are defending quite nicely. In the towers, they should be up just in time. The farm is under control from the green Rohan player, and the farm here is under control from the blue Rohan player. That means every Rohan player right now has three farms outside of their beasts, which is quite nice. Especially for this Rohan player because he will get to recruit those Rohirrim quite cheap for 450 resources. On the other side it looks like that this Rohan player is saving for either Theodin or uh, Eomia. He has around 1000 resources collected now. And his name is Smogogo. <laughs> Alright, the Mordor player has now enough power points for the Tainted Land which can be spammed in this matchup because Rohan players they want to get the chance to cover this early on. Remember Rohan and also Isengard? They don't have the chance to go for the Elven Wood slash Tainted Land with the first power point, unlike Mordor or Gonzo, who can get this very early on the field. Okay, Cripple has been used to kill the Hobbit. You have some level almost 3 Urukai battalions on the field, they should be now able to take down this farm. On the other side, the Mordor base is looking nice, even though I don't like the build order. I personally like to place the, Ur um, the Orc Pit right there, then I can build 3 slaughterhouses here, 3 slaughterhouses here, and place my Roll cage right in the middle of the backside. Because then I can use industry on either this tree or this tree, you know? And that's gonna be nearly impossible now for the for the model player. It's gonna be impossible actually, because he can only have either three slaughterhouses here or three slaughterhouses here. And the 
Troll Cage is not gonna be in a good spot in my opinion. Anyway, Sainted Land was used from the model play defensively, in between the mills. Those mills are untouched for the majority of the game, they didn't get destroyed one time so far, which is nice for the Isengard model team. Lourdes is gonna become stronger and stronger and it looks like the Rohan player is gonna go for a base rush, which is smart, because the Isengard player has nothing on the field so far. He's going for the trample first, which I like a lot. There are level 3 Urukai, it would be nice if you can save them. Smogogo is pinging his ally and saying, dude, I'm going in. <laughs> Alright, on the other side, this dude, Smogogo, was able to get Eomir on the field, guys. Eomir is gonna creep this Warclair slowly but surely. He's gonna try to get as much experience as possible. He was not getting the last hit quite yet, but he was able to share the experience with the, um, with the peasants. If your hero is close by to the allied units, he is able to share experience. After creeping this work layer, this Aomi is gonna be level 3, but the power spike once he is level 4 is gonna unlock the leadership, which means 60% increased damage and 50% increased combat experience for the allied Rohirrim or Rohirrim archers. Alright, the creeps secured actually by the orcs. Warchant has been used on them, so they have double buff now with the eye and Warchant. But there are still orcs at the end of the day, they still die quite fast. Lourdes is just running around to defend against those Rohirrim early on. He's now level 2. The troll layers are still remaining on the field, guys, and Eomir was able to get almost level 3. I mean, he will kill orcs potentially all the time, and eventually, he will be able to hit level 4. Okay, on the other side, he's gonna go for the stable for the Rohirrim Arches, which is smart, because Rohirrim Arches are not gonna be only great against the pikemen from Isengard, but they're also gonna be great against the mountain trolls from the Moro faction. Talking about the mountain trolls, the Moro player is now building the troll cage, guys. And again, I don't like this spot at all. In a situation like this, it's always nice to build multiple towers around your most important structure in your base, which is definitely the troll cage. Alright, this Rohan player on the other side is going for the armory now. He has no heroes on the field. Let me check how many horses he was able to recruit. He has only two horses, guys, which I don't like. I would, I would like to see three horses. And what you can do after three horses is you can either go for two more, which means you can get your stable to level two, which is gonna give you the chance to purchase the horseman shields, which is gonna make you tankier against crossbowmen, against towers, and against lords. And then demolish the stable right after and go for the armory next. Because after five horses, if you can keep them alive, you don't normally go for more horses. Five horses are more than enough on a map like Anorian. And with five horses, you can actually end up, you know, kinda. Oh, that's a bad thing actually. Never mind. There is no follow-up, the Lord was able to cripple him down, but there is nothing that can take him down. Lord is only level 2. He will need level 3 to unlock the Carnage. Which means he can cripple down Eomir, draw the sword, and then use Carnage right after in order to take him down. And Eomir is almost level 4, by the way. After killing the troll at the top side, he will be he will become level 4. The farm is still under control from the Blue Rohan player. Armory is up for the Isengard player now. That might be a little bit too early. On the other side, uh, I think, who is that pinging? Is this the Moro player? No, it's the Isengard player pinging, okay. Oh, he was trying, oh never mind, he was trying to chase the Rohirrim, but the Rohirrim are not gonna make it out alive, or can they? No, they can't. One of the Rohirrim has been taken down. And he had only two, that means he has to now revive one of these. And Armory is up on the field, he's gonna go for the heavy armor first, and potentially Forge Blade second. Alright, Eomir is level 4 now guys, the creep is gonna be secured by the green Rohan player as well. There is no Eodin on the field so far just yet. The, out, uh, the middle camp got captured by the model player Santiago though. Mm, that might be risky because with that you actually give the double Rohan team another target. Now they have three different options, they can either go for the middle camp or they can actually rush your base or the Isengard base. And defending all of these three buildings or bases is gonna be very tough. I don't like this personally, but it might work out quite well. What the mistake could be from the double Rohan team is that they can that they will be attacking the middle camp over and over again, which is not very necessary. You can always avoid the middle camp and attack the main castles instead. And with the trolls, he has to split them now, he has to keep the troll cage alive, but because he has to invest all the money he got right now into the, into the middle camp, he has no economy to actually keep recruiting more and more mountain trolls so far. Alright, so there is only one well which is smart, that's the team synergy, you don't need double well when you have double good factions like they do. 
one player can always go for the well, the other one doesn't have to do that. This place or this spot can be safe for either one more farm or in this case the archer range. Beautiful. Alright, so we have now uh, Rohir marches with Theorin and Eomir leadership guys, but they have no heavy armor just yet, they have no uh, fire or upgrade just yet. It looks like he's going for the fire or upgrade first, which is, which is going to increase their DPS not only against units but also against buildings. The thing is, they're going to become very squishy. And if you don't have heavy armor with those units, they're going to die very quickly. And it's always nice to use the standard formation, which is going to make you deal less damage, but the damage you are losing is going to be kind of even again after getting the uh, fire or upgrades. And you have also Eomir leadership, which is a damage leadership after all. Especially when you are trying to kill the base, you don't want to use the uh, wedge formation, which is going to make your units way squishier. Look, at, look how much damage they are taking from the normal towers. The troll is going down. Plus 20 for killing the troll because of the, uh, because of the outlaw leadership from Eomir. On the other side, we have some upgraded Isengard combos now. Lourdes is almost level 4. Level 5 is going to unlock the leadership. Smogogo is asking his ally to attack the Moro player at the bottom right side. And they can group now with the Rohirrim and the Rohirrim Arches. Let's see how much damage they will be able to deal. Like again, time matters a lot in this game and Isengard's Moro team, they are scaling quite hard. The Troll Cage is still only level 1, but he will eventually be able to get it to level 2, which will give him the chance to recruit uh, the most effective units in this matchup, in this case the Drama Trolls, for the support of the Isengard combos. Okay, Yodin is level 1, still level 4 is gonna make him huge, so he will have the Glorious Charge, which is gonna make, again, the Rohirrim, Rohirrim Arches for a short period of time almost invincible, and you can go for a Trample without being slowed down. He is now able to get the fire upgrade purchase. Yeah, that's gonna cost him 500 each. But the Rohirrim Arches, they are very, very weak against fire. Especially with no armor, they're gonna die very quickly. The Rohan player is rushing the Moro pace during all this time. He has no horseman shields just yet, but he has heavy armor plus the forge blades. Heal is being used. The trolls are moving now forward. The, Mo the Rohan player can actually keep going and has to avoid fighting against the trolls, obviously. Just you know, move around, kill the mills if you can, because look at this mill. It's almost level 3, guys. This mill didn't get killed one time for the entire game so far, which is really bad from the double Rohan team. The farm has been taken down. I like the way that he has now a lot of horses on the field. He might also go for the horseman shields, guys. He has now the stable level 2, by the way. Uh, the armory is remaining on the field for a long, long time. It's a mistake. It's just taking one spot of your base for no reason. In those kind of situations, just demolish it and build a farm instead. Alright, so he's gonna go for the small attacks, and that's gonna be kinda annoying for the double uh, for the Mordor Isengard team to deal with such a poke. Like, I think ideally what Isengard player has to do is make multiple units and keep one cross one combo battalion inside the ally space at the bottom right side, one of them in the middle camp, and one of them in your own base. Ideally, the model player should be trying to support every single group of units from the Isengard player with at least one Drama Troll. But this way they have the damage leadership they need in order to kill the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches faster. And then you can make like one or two battalions of combos and actually, you know, try to be aggressive with these units and try to kill the Rohan base. You can do that by using the Mountain Trolls as well. Alright, so... I think that's the goal, what the Morad Rohan or Mor Isengard team should do. They should now draw the attention from the double Rohan team to the main castle. You can use your trolls to kill the wall. And once you go inside with like two combos, Lords, Warchant, I and Drama Troll, it's gonna be nearly impossible for the double Rohan team to defend. Alright, so the Morad player has a great amount of resource income definitely, with the middle camp under his control, with a level almost 3 mil outside. So he can potentially get the Drama Troll and Witch King at pretty much the same time. But the poke is real and the towers, they have to get demolished in time because Eome and Theoden are just leveling up like crazy. Theoden is almost level 2 now. Theoden is also leveling up faster when Eome is level 4 because the combat experience of the Rohirrim allies uh, or Rohirrim archers in this case is being also active on Theoden who is sharing the experience with this unit. So the more experience points those Rohirrim Arches have, the faster the heroes around them are going to be also able to level up. 
That's why demolishing towers is very important in time. And in time means that you need to demolish them before they are around 50% HP mark. So the second they get shot, they get shot down by the Rohirrim Archers, just demolish them. You don't need to risk the biscuit. If a rush happening once again, this time with Horseman Shields, uh, all the mortal player has to do is keep this one protected. Now he has one Drama Troll on the, on the field, he will definitely need more than that. Isengard player has to make some more combos though. And again, Mortal player has 5000 resources now, he can go for the Witch King very soon. And it looks like the Isengard player is making a big mistake and trying to save for Saruman. You don't need Saruman in this matchup guys, trust me on that one. You need a lot of combos though. Like you need combos in every single base, otherwise you will be rotating all the time from bottom to top all the, all the time. You have to play very defensively. And Saruman is not gonna add too much to the table, you don't need it. Because you have so much damage already to burst down those units in, in seconds. You don't need the additional damage from Saruman's Fireball, Wizard Blast or whatever. Okay, the trolls, they have to be careful though. Oh, Cripple, uh, he's gonna cancel it because he, he was all about to miss it. And Lourdes is able, or unfortunately he's able to miss the Cripple. When the target he's aiming for is out of the range. The Cripple is gonna go on cooldown, but you won't be able to hit the target. And yeah, look at this, they are just poking around and the Isengard player has to move with his entire army from one side of the map to the other side. And during all this time, the Rohan players are pretty much untouched, all the farms are level 3. They are getting a great amount of resource income, the Moro player is gonna try to save for the Witch King now, it looks like he has enough money for that. The yeah, Witch King is on his way now guys, which means even more leadership, more damage, more armor for the allied Isengard units. And Isengard is going for Saruman, which again is a mistake, but it is how it is, let's see if he can make it work. I would like to see more units instead, but it's my choice. Industry is going to be used in the middle camp, that's going to affect every single furnace by the way. And even the furnace he was just building up. Like if you build a furnace and use industry on it, the second the furnace is 100%, it's going to have the effect of industry if you didn't know. The rush is happening in the middle of the map. There is no protection because Isengard is rotating with all his units from one side to the other side 24-7. And it's very hard for the Moro Isengard team to be everywhere at this point because obviously the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches are quite mobile units. Unlike the combos, which are pretty slow. And Saruman, I don't know, maybe Saruman is gonna be helpful. I don't see it being effective enough. Drama Troll plus Witch King is gonna be joining the battlefield soon. That means only from these two units, Isengard units are gonna deal 100% increased damage and 100% increased armor. And I'm not even adding the Warchant and Eye of Sauron just yet. Just imagine how much damage output those units gonna have. Which is gonna be just pretty much insane. But he has to still avoid to fight against the Rohirrim Arches with this much leadership. And Isengard, what is he doing? Like, there is nothing that can attack the wall, so he's just waiting there for no reason. There are no trolls, so now he has to rotate back. I think it's a miscoordination between Isengard and Mortal Player. The Mortal Player is now just losing the trolls one by one all the time. And also, he's feeding a lot of power points to the Double Rohan team, especially. To the one with the Rohirrim Arches guys. Uh, Lourdes was crippling, I think he was missing the cripple, he was not hitting anything. We have now two Theodians on the field guys, just in case one of them dies. Cripple is on cooldown, and the Rohirrim Arches, they have to avoid fighting those combos. There is even a Golem chasing down the Rohirrim, this man. <laughs> I like it, Eowyn is on the field, Eowyn is being mainly recruited to have some counter against the Witch King. Remember double Eowyn I think, is they are almost able to one shot. The Witch King. But oh, the Witch King is making a mistake and running it down. And look at this, guys. This Theoden is almost level 4 already. Oh, and the Rohirrim Arches, they were able to get so much experience from the kill. Level 5, level 7, they are already so highly ranked. And now they can just go to the Moro base at the bottom right side. And that's like the cat and mouse game I was talking about. What is Saruman doing in the meantime? He's absolutely useless, guys. Like, of course, you can use a fireball from time to time, but he is definitely not needed in this matchup. Trust me. You will need more units, so you can leave at least one combo in each base, and you don't have to rotate between the map, between the camps 24-7. Imagine one combo battalion in each base with Drama Troll. They, didn't, they don't need to be worried about the bases anymore if they do that. 
Oh, GC maybe? GC maybe? Almost GC. All he has to do is kill like one Lumber Mill worker, I guess. He's gonna get it there, I guess. Let's see. And GC unlock, guys. Glorious charge. Do they have land, though? Let me check. Yes, Arbok has land. I think that's the blue Rohan player. And also his ally, uh, Smogogo, my man, has also land. <laughs> so double land for a beautiful trample is gonna negate all the leadership from the Isengard's uh, units. And they're gonna die like flies. Trust me. And even heroes, they can't survive this much burst. Like Rohir marches are a great counter unit to the heroes as well. You can burst them down in a second. Like if the Rohir marches from the Green Rohan player Smogogo get the chance to attack the uh, Saruman for like 2 seconds, he's gonna die. He's going for a Nazgul which is a mistake. You don't need a Nazgul because you could see yourself already the Witch King himself is dying in a second against this unit. I mean Nazgul is not like useless because you can still use him to defend against the normal Rohirrim. But I think the money could be invested into some more trolls or catapults. He's finally going now for the Rohan base, but I think the Rohan team, they're gonna try to defend this one. Industry is being, being used once again in the middle camp on all these buildings at the same time. Isengard refusing to make more units, guys. It looks like he has no money and he has not that much resource income. Maybe the Moro player should be using the industry on his ally space. That's also a possibility. You don't need to use it on yourself all the time, especially if you have so much money. You don't have to do that. And that's, I think that's the only drama troll they have left, right? Yeah, he lost the troll cage. It means no more drama trolls any soon. That's why it's so important to keep this one alive. No Witch King leadership, by the way. Can they take down this wall? That's the question. The tower is defending, but the towers, they can get destroyed from Rohan by the combos. Glorious charge. Oh my god, that's a massive army. He's going for a trample, but riding right through the pikeman. Warchen is being used. Elvin Wood will be used once again. Eye of Sauron. There is no cover from the Mordo player, however. He's using it now, finally, but he's he using it after everything is kind of dead. Oh, but Isengard is actually still winning this fight for some reason. Saruman has to be careful. Look Saruman now, guys. Look Saruman's health. You see that? You see what I mean? Saruman is absolutely useless here. Aragorn is taking so much damage. He can't survive even with Anduril Sword. Level 10 combos on the field. I don't see Lords. I think Lourdes is here. Almost level. He is still not level 5. That's really unfortunate. Rain is being used now, guys. Which negates all the leadership from the Rohan team. But because there is a tainted land, he can always step on it. I don't know what the combos are doing. Don't chase the heroes. Attack the combos. Or Rohir marches. Lords is finally level 5. It looks like. Yeah, he has now so much leadership. But the Drama Troll is the only one remaining. So he has to keep the Drama Troll alive. It's nice move. Stepping on the tainted land. To negate the effect of the rain. Maybe in those kind of situations, it would be a better choice. Oh, but... Yeah, there you oh, he, Okay, never mind. It was an Eomir Spear, not Eowyn Spear. I take it back. He was able to survive for now. But Theoden has been taken down. The wall is safe because there is no more troll that can take it down. He's gonna also rebuild that over time. Uh, after investing some money. And this Theoden was also able to survive. Now, this Theoden is dead, right? Yeah, this one was with the one, the one with Glorious Charge. But remember, also the other Theoden is almost level 4. That means you're gonna have eventually two Theodens. Of level 4 for the Glorious Charge. Witch King is gonna be back on the field now, which is nice. Double Troll Cage, finally he's doing something with the money he has. But they are both level 1, so that means no Drama Trolls any soon. This Drama Troll has to move to the combos. Don't be on an open field like this for no reason. Isengard player was... He was actually going for the Tainted Land and the Freezing Rain. Um, I don't know about that. Like... Yeah, of course, I mean, Devastation, or not Devastation, I mean, the Field of Fires is not very significant in this matchup. Because you are pretty much having only two Lumber Mills on the field. Look at these combos. They are, they are so tanky, guys. Where is the Drama Troll when we need him? Drama Troll is chilling! Oh, they are even dying the Witch King! What is Witch King doing? Glorious Charge! Warchan has been used, Lord's leadership, Witch King leadership, but the Drama Troll, I don't know about the Drama Troll, he's doing nothing! It's the most important leadership for those combos. And he has also these weak combos with the Pikemen in the front. Don't make them, they are so much weaker than the normal combos, guys, trust me. Level 10, uh, Glorious Charge, Cloud Break, Heal, and uh, just kill... I think he can just one-shot Witch King. Yeah, look at this damage, guys, right? You see that? That's the power of Rohirrim Arches with that much leadership. Look at this damage against Lourdes. Lourdes is gone. 
The heroes are dying like flies. Double glorious charge, by the way. Cloud Break was reducing the armor and movement speed of the enemy units. So Isengard is potentially gonna revive his Harmon and Lords at the same time, which is gonna cost him a lot of money. That's 3,200 he has to reinvest now into reviving his heroes. And he should be not doing that, he should be just making more units instead. You need Lords though. Lords is always nice to cripple down the enemy heroes, but you really, really don't need Saruman. He's just gonna feed power points at this point. Because you can't really step up against the Rohir March at this point, you know? You will die. So if you, have a, if you have to make a choice between making more units or reviving your Saruman, always go for the first option. Make more units instead. Very, very important. Very, very important. Witch King got killed once again. Drama Trolls is uh, dead, I guess. Now he's finally, He was finally moving around, but it was too late. An Isengard player was able to save only one level 5 combo. All the level 10 combos are goners. They are already dead. Finally getting now some catapults on the field, but it might be too late for that. Look at the Nazgul he was recruiting, guys. He's absolutely useless. He can't approach this unit. There is no way. Gataya is gonna get sniped down the second it's coming out of the Siege Warwicks. Towers are dying and look at this Nazgul now. Nazgul, now you see him, now you don't. <laughs> He's corners like that, you know. Smogogo, my friend, Smogogo is shining bright like a diamond. Glorious charge is going to be used. Look at this weak combos with the pike man in the front side. You don't make this. You make normal combos with Urukai, they are much more resistant. Oh, but Elmer, Elmer is running it down. Elmer, kill him? Kill him maybe? Can you kill him though? That's the question. Yeah, you can. Drama Troll has to be protected, that's the only Drama Troll he has. The Rohirrim Archers are disengaging now. Darkness is still not available for the Mordor player, I think. He is still one power point away from this point. Saruman, what can you do? He's gonna use the Warm Tongue and cancel it because he wouldn't be able to hit any of these units. And yeah, that's the worst situation ever. Like, Rohirrim Archers is very, very strong, highly leveled. They can always go for the poke and they can fish power points left and right. Fireball, not the best one, the combo. Level 8, Isengard is not paying attention. Saruman, look what Saruman is doing, guys. That's called suicide in my book. Level 8 combo is gonna be potentially taken down. Look how tanky the Urukai is in compared to the pikemen against arrows. That's why you make normal combos. And if you do need some pikemen, just make some regular pikemen and put them inside your units. The trolls are getting one-shotted. Witch King has to be more careful, definitely. Oh, I, but I think he was reviving Witch King in this outpost or in this camp. That's why he was forced to cancel it and revive him once again. And that's also one of the things I have to mention. It's so important to revive your heroes in your main castle, which is protected much better than your camp in the middle or outpost. Very, very important to do that. Uh, Isengard's economy is not looking great. And yet again, he is reviving his Saruman, who is absolutely not doing nothing but dying the second he is entering the battlefield, guys. He refusing to make more units. He has so many, so many uh, power command points available. He can make at least four more combos at this point. Easily. Like three more combos at least. And make the normal combos with Urukai and Crossbow Man. They are not only cheaper than those combos, but they are also more mobile. They are faster. By the way, if you don't know, the Urukai and Crossbowman combo are faster than the uh, Pikeman and Crossbowman combo. And Pikeman and Crossbowman combo are only good against Trample, but they are horrible against everything else, including the Rohirrim Arches. And this Rohirrim Arches are very, very strong, guys. Glorious Charge, Rama Troll. Yeah, he's gonna use Warchant. He has a lot of leadership, but is this enough? Oh, land is being used. Aragon is diving in. Lourdes is refusing to use Cripple. He's gonna finally use it. But he has nothing left that can kill. He's stepping on the he's on the enemy land. Which means and rain is useless as well. There is a tainted land, he can always go on and leave afterwards. Drama troll is down, Isengard is losing everything, and that's gonna be the game, I'm assuming, because I think Rohan player has AOD. Yeah. Smog go go. Go go smog go go. Tainted land is gonna be used defensively. But he's gonna leave the tainted land now, has leadership back in the business. <laughs> Just like that. Like, let's be honest, Rain is useless. That's why he was... And he should be going for the Tainted Land in the first place. Isengard's player was playing bad this game. I gotta be honest with you guys. Uh, Siglipap was playing really, really bad. And AOD is gonna be summoned. I think Isengard is still far, far away from getting the Balrog, guys. He's still 8 power points away from getting his Balrog unlocked, which is a lot. 
And the middle camp is getting destroyed now. Just like that, the trolls are dying without being able to do much. Thing is, trolls are not very impactful here. Should be getting some catapults instead. Make still some trolls to protect your katas against the normal Rohirrim. But make catapults, you need them in this matchup. Against this many Rohirrim archers with level 10. Like, look how many he has. Level 10, guys. Level 10, level 10, level 10, level 10. That's crazy. Full leadership, by the way, with Eomir, Theoden, and Aragorn now. And they are hitting like an absolute track. Look at the DPS they have once the heroes are close by. Even a level 3 furnace, which is one of the tankiest buildings in the game, is getting melted down. Just like that. Towers are dying, everything is getting one-shotted, Drama Troll can't survive. The Mora Isengard team, they played that really sloppy, while the Green Rohan player was playing it really nicely. With the support of his ally, uh, Arbok, his name is. And that's gonna be able to finish the Mora base, I'm assuming. Isengard is gonna send some units now, including a Saruman, who is... Who done nothing so far but dying and feeding power points, guys. And look what he's gonna be able to do now, guys. Look what he's gonna be able to do now. Just watch carefully. Mori is gone. What can Isengard do now without any support of his ally? Santiago has been defeated. Alvin Wood is going to be used. And Elias, he's gonna be able to capture this ends. But look at Saruman now. Please, 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 please. Look at this now, please, guys. The second they are able to shoot him down, and even on a land, which means they have no leadership, Saruman is getting bursted down in a single second. And what a performance from the Green Rohan player, Small Gogo, my man. As Siglipap has been defeated. And GG well played, very well played from the Green Rohan player. Definitely you can see the power of the Rohirrim matches in this one. They are very powerful if you know how to micro them. And they, are, they don't seem very strong early on with low levels. But once they have level 5, level 6 or higher, they hit like a truck. Especially against this matchup in which you're killing pikes and trolls all the time. And also heroes. I mean, I think the game is free still for the Isengard Mora team if they know how to play this matchup properly. The Isengard player didn't know what he's doing, let's be honest. He was making a mistake into reviving Saruman over and over again, investing so much money and refusing to make more units. It was forcing him to move from one base to the other base and kind of forced him only to defend himself. They were not in a position in which they could go for an attack. Because they have like one army with two combos or three combos at max. And when you go for an attack, you lose your base. That's, that's how it works. That's why you need to keep some combos in your main castle. That's how this matchup works. But they didn't know that. But you know that after watching this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. i see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.